so much uh, for joining us for this webinar. I'm very excited to have you on. It's going to be awesome today. Thank you for those that are really, really here very early. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I quickly want you to, if you can hear me, uh, please type yes. If you can hear me, please type yes. Uh, I'm going to type something now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Please type yes if you can hear me and you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, some of, some of you are there already. Can you please respond? Thank you very much, uh, Shagun, for responding to that. So, um, you can hear me and you can see my screen. Please type another yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, that's very clear. Today, let me just uh, tell you, um, we're going to have roughly about one hour today, maybe a little more. Uh, but I'm really excited to have you here. We're going to start exactly at 11. And I think we have about two minutes more uh, to go. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the power of the mind. How can you tap into the power of your mind uh, to live a successful, happy, and fulfilling life? with less effort. Um, you know, that sounds like a big promise, but trust me, um, I've lived this myself and I've seen, you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people live it as well. So you are in for a treat. Uh, Rosalind said she can't hear me. Is it that you can't hear me or you can't see me? You can see, can you see my screen or you can, can you check your speaker? Make sure you, your speaker is on. Um, okay. So that's reminding me to start. Okay. I think we need to, okay. You can now, Rosalind. Thank you very much for informing me. Let me just uh, switch off all these reminders and then we shall be on a roll. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Can you find a quiet place where you cannot be disturbed? Um, it will also be good if you could have a pen and a notepad to write with um, because we're going to be sharing a lot of uh, stuff today and it's good. As soon as you get an insight, it's good that you make a note straight away. Then uh, there is an exercise we're going to do towards the end, uh, which will require you to write. Uh, so make sure you have a notepad and you have a pen and you are on your laptop. Um, if you are on, on your phone, uh, the system uh, doesn't really behave well with uh, answered with phone. So if you're on a phone, uh, switch back to your laptop because that will give you a much better experience. Okay, so more and more people are joining. And as I promised that we're just going to start straight away. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Now, um, so many people are quiet here. Yeah, there are a lot of people in. They are not saying anything. Uh, please say something. Tell me that you're there and uh, that you can hear me and you can see my screen. Uh, don't don't let's be shy. Let's let's participate. Uh, it, it's very important that we participate. Uh, participation will help you remember. And secondly, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't want it to be a lecture room. <laughs> Most of us, we, we don't like school. Uh, so it's not a lecture room, so please let us participate. Thank you, Carol. Uh -huh, that's good. Okay, people are, people are responding. Good. I think I'm just going to start because um, thank you, Ibrahim. Um, 
Great, great. So, so people are participating. It's very good that we participate so that we can remember. So I'm just gonna fire on now. Uh, what we are on to today, um, is how to tap into the power of your mind, uh, to live a purposeful, happy and fulfilling life with less effort. So let's go. You know, I usually, I usually start my, <laughs> presentation with this quote quitters don't win and winners don't quit um i got that from a book called think and grow rich oh thank you Ruth, for joining us uh fantastic it's good good to have you on um in in the book think and grow rich uh, it says quitters don't win and winners don't quit so i try to practice principles rather than teach them so if you wait if you stay around at the end of this webinar um i have a special gift for you uh what that gift is you find out at the end okay so let's roll hmm. okay so who is this webinar for Okay, if you want to improve on any of these areas of life, then you are in the right place. Your health, your wealth, your relationship, your spirituality. Uh, because the mind is where everything comes from. It, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have challenges. Uh, it means when we have challenges, we are in a position to deal with it. Um, properly, appropriately, and elegantly, yeah? So, uh, so the journey, the, the journey of life. Hmm. So, what's, what's your dream? That this is part of the reason why I say you should bring your notepad and your pen. So let's start with that. What is your dream? Can you please, I'll give you five seconds to actually write it down. What is your dream? Write it down. If you want to share it, uh, feel free to do so, but uh, just write, write it in your notepad, please. You have two seconds to do that. Okay, we're going to use that exercise later as we go along. Um, so, are you confused? Are you confused with so many solutions that don't seem to work? Um, I've, I've been there. I've been in that situation. Um, you know, you get somebody who tells you this is the right thing to do, and then another person tells you that's the right thing to do, and you do both of them, and you still, you still haven't got the results you expected. Uh, the, the major challenge is there is always something stopping us from getting to that dream uh we are also gonna look at that today so this is a question for you why is it not working so far we are also gonna address that um government has no intention of helping us at all um i'm not being political but the government are focused on brexit um to the detriment of everything else so we've got to look after ourselves and make things work for ourselves okay so fantastic ah, i have a question for you would you would you allow me to brag <laughs> For a few seconds, you will allow me to brag uh, for a few seconds. Um, yeah, that's, that's me collecting an award, uh, recognizing my work as an influential role model and mentor. We don't, uh, do this work for recognition, of course. We do it because we believe that it is the right thing to do. We believe, uh, with the, all of our art that making a difference is the purpose for which we are created and i'm sure it is the same for you however when other people that have received uh input from you 
and they've received transformation in their life, uh, when they start talking about you and um, it gets into the ears of people uh, that are capable of recognizing you, then it's really very nice. So uh, that's my humble self receiving an award there. Uh, some of my friends actually came, so I'm um, thankful for, for their support. Okay, some of you, some of you are familiar with me. You know that I, um, I, I'm a qualified chartered accountant. I was receiving my fellowship here of Institute of Chartered Accountants. Um, I'm also a fellow of ACCA. It's not about me today. It's about you. I have this TV program. Some of you are familiar with it. Uh, once in a while, I do uh, bring influential people. Um, the, the reason why I brought uh, this up and this particular guy is um, I want you to learn something from him. If you haven't watched this program, at the end of this show, please... Um, you know, send send my team a message. They will send you a link to watch it. It is very very powerful. Um, Stephen Stephen was a colonel in the British Army, and um, he was really really an excellent soldier. Uh, but he has since transformed into uh, becoming an entrepreneurship juggernaut, uh, running multi billion pounds. Uh, projects and making a success of it. So he shared some powerful insights, um, you know, during that show that I want you uh, to pick up and uh, listen to. And I'm grateful to, to, to him as well. For some of you that are here, you came to my last seminar. He, he also came, he also came around to teach, uh, which is wonderful. Th 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 those are the kind of people, those are the kind of friends um, that I relate to very well because they, they share my passion for making a difference. And, um, you know, as I said, if you haven't watched it, uh, please, at the end of the show, at the end of this webinar, please send a message to my team. They will send you a link to be able to access it. Okay, you, you also know I'm the author of Gold Mine of Your Mind, uh, Your Fast Track to Abundance. Um, Ruth, Ruth just told me last, was it yesterday, that I, I'm rereading this book now. <laughs> she said, you know, I just have to say, okay, that's, that's good, uh, because the book is not just for you to read it once and put it in your shelf. Is for you to read it again and again until the lessons in the book uh, is thoroughly understood and you can also implement it. And I'm going to talk about implementing insights later, which I am really passionate about. And this is the reason why I actually am doing this, this, this webinar. Is what I found uh, in, in my in my business is because I'm in the business of helping people do their business better. What I found is uh, when people can't get their mind right, when they have the wrong kind of belief about themselves, is no matter how hard they try. This, this is the reason why I'm organizing this today. No matter how hard they try, they don't get the result. Which is a shame because when you put in the effort, you should get the result. So it's like a cause and effect. Um, that is the case. But self sabotage uh, will cause people not to do what they ought to do. So, so that's the reason why I'm organizing this. And you see, as we go along, uh, what I'm gonna share with you will be uh, very powerful. So I, I've met great people on my journey. That's Kanun Wanko, that's first pilot, first indigenous pilot in Nigeria, that's a pastor, that's MP, Tim Steven, you know, loads of great people uh, that have said great things about my book. So 
Well, today is not about the book. Today it is about transformation. Yes, I've been an entrepreneur. I've been in business. I've been in the corporate world. I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. <laughs> and I've made a lot of money again. It's not about money. See, um, how, how would you feel if, if you got a million pounds today? How would you feel? Think about it. Trust me, you're not going to feel any different. You have more choices, <laughs> um, but it's going to be the same. The same thoughts going through your mind day in, day out will still be going through your mind. Uh, having more money may just give you a little bit more new thoughts <laughs> that you can play with, um, but it's, it's, not, it's not as critical as we think it is. Until you've made it, you think I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> but uh, the, the truth is, um, we've got to uh, get one thing right in life, is our ability to control our mind. And as we go along, you see why that is the case. So I, I, I don't hide the fact that, you know, um, you know, I, I didn't have the best of childhood, um, because I, I lost my dad very young and, uh, we fell into poverty. Um, that's not unusual. Um, but it left 10 of us. <laughs> and if you're wondering, okay, how can one woman, you know, do that? Uh, uh, not, not one woman, a lot of them. Anyway, um, yeah, so, so, so he left a lot of us and, uh, we, we got help. Uh, things were really, really difficult, but we got help. That was the reason why I managed to get education. And without that education, I wouldn't be here today speaking to you. So as young as I was at the time, I, you know, I made a promise to myself that if I managed to, you know, whether the storm I make it, I will devote my time uh, to helping other people as well. Um, not that I kept that promise earlier in my career, so I'm going to share that with you as well. So, uh, the day my world shifted and the cause of a cup of tea, I'm not going to share that now. I'm going to share that with you later. Uh if I, if I, if I forget to share it, please remind me. Um, so my why, that, that's my why is I want, uh, to be able to impact as many people as possible. And that's one of the reasons for organizing this webinar. And you see, as we go along, how that's going to work out. The mind, the mind can heal the body. The mind can heal the body. Um, I'm also going to share that with you further on, uh, my personal experience. So, there is this um, Dr. J.B. Mosley uh, conducted an experiment. Um, it is to buttress the fact that uh, your mind can actually heal your body. Uh, the, the, the landmark study of Placebo surgery for knee osteoarthritis. I hope those of you in the medical profession <laughs> should tell me whether I pronounced that well or not. Osteoarthritis. So it says, what it was, um, the, the study, they took about 165 people with that condition and 80% uh, of them, they didn't actually uh, do the operation. It just got open their knees and then they sewed it back and uh, they, they conducted the operation on about 20% of them. The truth is there is no difference <laughs> in the report from the patients of how well they were after the operation. So they all reported improvement in their conditions. So, so that's, that's an evidence of the power of your mind. So if your mind can do that, if your mind can, uh, believe, uh, that an operation has been done and also heal itself as a result, what else can it do? What, what else can your mind do? Um, you, you can Google that experiment and, uh, Google the name of Dr. J.B. Mosley, 
don't do that now. <laughs> do that later and, and read about that experiment yourself. So the mind, the mind is really, really very powerful. So what was the secret? What was the secret of my passion for doing this? It's you know, number one, the desire to help others, as I've said before. I've read thousands of books on this particular genre and I've also attended seminars, webinars, and I've also had personal experience of helping people transform through coaching and I've had my own personal transformation as well. So, now enough said about me and my journey, now let's go to work. So, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Okay. So, sometimes, if you are looking for wisdom, if you are looking for wisdom, I don't know, you know, whether you're a Christian or not. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a pastor. But if you're looking for wisdom, uh, go read the Bible. Uh, because, and don't read, don't read the surface of it. Read it deep. Read the deeper meaning in those words. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So he didn't say, as muscular as a man is, <laughs> so he is. So we worry too much about our physical appearance and we neglect what is really, really inside, uh, which is what I want to talk to you about today. Um, in the, the first chapter of my book said the mind is everything. That that quote is not actually from me, it's from the Buddha. The mind is everything, what you think you become. Okay, so that's another evidence. So this is the reason why I wrote the book, Gold Mine of Your Mind, Your Fast Track to Abundance, that is to get people's attention to pay attention to the mind. And actually, I think that was the best title I could have chosen um, because it's getting a lot of people to transform their lives um, rapidly, very rapidly. And that, that is the reason why I also do the television program on Sky 589 that I call Gold Mine of Your Mind. So, this is the final quote on this subject. Andrew Carnegie. Um, I think I, I talk a lot about this man because of the phenomenal impact he had in the world. Um, and that man died uh, 100 years ago. I'm still talking about him. He was one of the richest men ever. They said, if you put Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett's wealth together, <laughs> Andrew Carnegie uh, will still have been richer. Um, so I, I'm fascinated by this man and I've read everything, anything with Andrew Carnegie's name on it, I've read it. Uh, he said the man who acquires the ability to take possession of his own mind may take possession of anything else to which is justly entitled. That's, that's a really very powerful word. And he said, take possession of his own mind. So the reason why I'm doing this today is to show you, uh, not just to show you, but to help you take possession of your own mind uh, so that you stop trying too hard. You start trying to do it all by yourself. Uh, get some little help. Um, Richard Bandler, uh, I've talked about Richard Bandler a lot in my seminars um, because of the technology this guy uh, invented, um, himself and John Grinder, um, it's phenomenal, it's phenomenal, it's where, where you help people change a matter of minutes instead of therapy for two years, for three years, for five years, they help people change in a minute. And that technology is called neuro linguistic programming. 
Richard would take somebody living on the street for like seven years doing drugs. He would take them, work with them for one hour, and they would be off draw and be a responsible member of the society forever. To me, that's a miracle. And how does he do that? Is the understanding of the mind, understanding of how the mind works. So that's, if there is only one thing that you're going to take away from today, that is it. Understand how the mind works. I don't care what you do with it. You may use it to find a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend. You may use it to find a new wife. You may use it to find money. You may use it to grow your career, to grow your business. Whatever you do with it, uh, it's up to you. But you've got to understand these principles and apply it to whatever you do. That will make your success a bit effortless. Uh, Richard Pandler said, brains aren't designed to get results. They go in directions. If you know how the brain sets your own, if you don't, then somebody else will. Someone else will set your direction. Okay? Now, this is going to be a little bit controversial, but you know that it's true. Principles don't fail. Do. I'll come back to failure later. Because people actually don't fail. People get results. And uh, if you... If you are intelligent, you learn, you take that result and you learn from it and you start all over again and do it more intelligently. That's actually not my concept. That's Henry Ford said that. Uh, so why do people still fail after using the following? Vision board, <laughs> uh, visualization, affirmation, prayers, Law of attraction. So, if you've used any of those before, and uh, if you didn't get the result you were expecting, hmm, today you find out why. <laughs> because you, the, the principles are absolutely infallible. The principles are working. It's like gravity. You know, if you jump from, you know, from the window of your one-story building, you're coming down, whether you're a billionaire or you're a pauper, yeah? So, principles don't lie. Uh, application of the principle is where we falter, and then we don't get results. And what do we do very quickly is we blame the principles. Um, don't do that. So, I'm going to share with you today... Um, how to go about it. And don't you think that uh, all principles will work for you? Yeah? Uh, it's not true because you you are a unique being. So the Father Vision Board work, worked for Joe doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Maybe visualization will work for you better. Maybe affirmation will work for you better. Maybe there is something in your makeup that is actually stopping all of that from happening. Um, that's what I'm going to look at next. So, let, let, let's talk about Engram. Uh, for those of you that are psychologists or therapists, you understand what this is. Um, one Engram may be the stumbling block of stopping you from getting your goal. So, if you have Engram that says, um, you know, people don't like me. If you have that belief, uh, it doesn't matter. You can do vision ball from here to tomorrow. That engram will keep stopping you. So, well, what is engram? It's an emotional, it's like your subconscious mind recording anything happening to you. Everything that has happened to you. If it is significant, your subconscious mind will record it. Uh, let's let's assume that um, a young child uh, was bitten by a dog. Um, 
that engram will be in his brain. And anytime he sees a dog, he's going to panic and run. Uh, that's good. That's good for our survivor. But what we then do is we generalize. We generalize that belief to other things. Yeah. So many other things. Forward, uh, something is stopping us. Yeah. So for, for you, for those of you that are old enough to know about record, if you have a scratch in the record and uh, you're playing it, it is not stuck and it will be playing the same thing over and over again. That's, if you've heard the word uh, broken record, that's, that's where it comes from. It's like a broken record. That engram will be there. And anytime you hit that engram, uh, something's going to happen uh, and it's automated and you have no control over it. And uh, that's the challenge. So how do we deal with that? That's some of the things we're going to look at today. He said, um, talked about my staff, or the story of my staff. I, I will just I'll summarize that story because it's a long story. I employed one young woman a while ago. She was really, really very bright at the interview. Uh, but when she got onto the job, she was absolutely uh, rubbish at the job. Um, but I was looking for, where is, the, where is this young woman that I interviewed? Something must be wrong somewhere. You know, I wasn't quick to fire people, but I went on for a while trying to study her. And I was determined to bring out that talent in her. So one day she messed up something. And, and I asked, I've seen everything she's doing. She's just being too careful. She's just being too careful about everything. And when you're in that mode, you're going to be making a lot of mistakes. So I asked her, do you think being judged every time you do something? And that question brought her to tears. And she then explained to me how I was horrendous because... She was living. Uh, she was living with a stepmother that was very, very harsh on her, and that wasn't even uh, the biggest problem. She shared with me that the brother of the stepmother raped her when she was like fourteen, and uh, she couldn't tell. But she told the stepmother and the stepmother beat her up that she wanted to ruin her family. And she kept it within her step scene, even she was around 25 at the time. So, so I looked at her, you know, be an engram there. So to cut a long story short, I worked with her for three days, for three days, trying to remove that engram. And we did. She became one of my best staff. And funny enough, she had the confidence to tell the dad after so many years. She had the confidence to tell the dad, to the dad what we did. Um, and that came with an expensive wine for me. <laughs> I wasn't doing it for that reason. I was just trying to help a staff of mine uh, that was in trouble. And she was exemplary from there on. She's married now and she's got her own business. So that, that is our one little thing. One, one little Engram inside of you may stop you from getting to the next level. And if you don't remove it, it doesn't matter whether you do vision board, you do visualization, you do prayers for money tonight, you do fasting, 
that's gonna be stopping you okay so let let me move on from that uh quickly i've already uh explained what engram is so um uh, like, like I've quoted the Bible before, I'm going to quote this again, and I'll tell you why. And it said, And no man put that new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Say no man also having drunk old one desired new for he said the old is better okay now where, where am i going with this is let's let's start with the new wine inside old bottles when you're trying to when you're trying to get new stops with who you are it's not going to work. Yes, yeah, like putting new wine in old bottles. So if you want new things, you need to become a new person. Does that make sense? If you want something new, you've got to become somebody new. doesn't mean change of your appearance. Change who you are from inside out. Yeah? So, when you put new wine into new bottles, both are preserved. So when you are the kind of person that can get the result that you're chasing, then you are both preserved. That is an effortless success. Yeah? So, now this is, this part, last part is even much more poignant because he said, no man having drunk old wine straight away desired new. That's very true for us because the moment we're familiar with the situation, we don't want to change it. We might be frustrated from here to, you know, Siberia. We don't psychologically and subconsciously, we don't want to change it because we are familiar with it. Yeah? So this passage is talking about if you drink old wine, if you are used to drinking old wine, you don't want new. So if you are used to uh, poverty, you don't want to be rich. If you are used to sickness, you don't want to be healthy. You know, it's not consciously, but it is subconsciously. You might try as hard as you want, but it's going to be the same again and again. Let us look at conscious mind versus subconscious mind. Your, your conscious mind is where you put your attention. Yeah, it's where you choose. It's, it's where you choose. Uh, do I want A or, or do I want B? Um, you have the ability to accept or reject, and you, you are very original. What that means is, uh, what you see is what you get. Yeah. So, well, how is that different from your subconscious mind? Your subconscious mind, which is much more powerful, which is where the program running your life is stored, as I've explained uh, with engram, um, as we have bad engram, we have good engrams as well. So you see some people um, that everything they touch, you know, it turns to gold. Yeah. And they said they have Midas touch. That's wonderful. Um, so. As you have bad engrams, you also have good ones. Uh, so, so it's not that everything is bad. So it's about you um, identifying what's stopping you and removing it. Your subconscious mind cannot reject, um, which is why we must be careful about what we let into our mind from TV, from gossips. <laughs> Um, you know, from mourners, you know, people that are always complaining, stay away from them. Uh, because your subconscious mind cannot reject. It will just take it in. And if it is important enough, it will record it. And it will affect what you do. 
and it's not gonna be consciously, you will not be aware of it. And that is why it is called subconscious or unconscious. Yeah? So it must readily accept whatever you feed it. This is much more important. It cannot tell real situation from imagined situation. Yeah. There, there, was, there was an experiment a while ago. They took 20 people uh, to exercise for two weeks and they took 20 people to spend the same time imagining themselves exercising. They were both the, the, the two group and, and the other group, they, they were tested after a while. Um, there was no difference. There was no difference in those of, you know, whether somebody has exercised or not. Your mind will actually cannot tell whether something is imagined or real, um, which is why visualization is very powerful. Um, so those of you that have been doing visualization and it's not working, I will tell you why as we go along, because you might just be doing it wrong. Okay? Okay, so... Um, so the power of beliefs. So forget about engrams. Let's forget about, you know, uh, you know, imagination, visualization, and all of that. Let's talk about beliefs. Um, beliefs is, is, is the most powerful thing running our life. You know, your beliefs generate your thoughts. Your thoughts generate your emotion. Your emotion generates your action. Your action generates your result. So, what does that mean? Uh, your belief is producing your thoughts day in, day out. And whatever you think about, you get a feeling. And that feeling will generate whether you take action or not. And that whether you take action or not will determine your result. It's as simple as that. So when you're trying uh, to change your action, no matter how hard you're trying, you are not in control. You're not in charge of it. Uh, something else is in charge. What you need to change is the belief. You need to change the belief. Uh, some of you have heard about the Pachopra, a um, medical doctor um, turned uh, spiritual guru. Uh, he identified, and this is also in my book, uh, Gold Mine of Your Mind, he identified that we have approximately 60,000 talks a day. Unfortunately, 95% of them are thoughts we had the day before. Can you tell why that will be the case? It's because there is a program uh you know, creating the thoughts. We're not in charge of it. Even if we try uh, consciously to change it, we can't. If you want to experiment with that after this webinar, sit, sit quietly in a place and, uh, you know, imagine what thoughts are coming to you and write them down. You're completely not in control. So you're better off addressing your belief. So how, how do we learn our beliefs? Um, the way we learn to talk and the way we learn to walk is by imitating others around us. That's exactly the way we learn our beliefs. Plus our experience. Plus our programming from our parents, from our siblings, from our teachers, from our church, from from society, from our culture, from our language. It is complicated, yeah? So, which is why change is quite difficult for some people. Um, in, in India, I, I've made this example in my book as well. In India, uh, they will take, uh, you know, in the circles where they use animals for entertainment, um, so when they groom in this, this, those animals, they will take a small stone and put it on the ground and put a lousy rope and tie it around the young 
elephant's neck. The trouble is, elephant was elephant but was powerless, was very young. Um, so they do that. So it gets to a point where the the elephant is as massive and as big, and if it chooses, it would be all tanked. <laughs> yeah. Flimsy stump and flimsy rope tied the elephant. Uh, and the elephant moved, unfortunately. So why, why is that? Why is that? Can you answer that question? Because that elephant has been conditioned to think that it is powerless. Yeah? It's been conditioned to think it is powerless, so it remains so for the rest of its life. Now, let's imagine there is an elephant from the wild <laughs> who is so powerful and who understands his own power uh, was introduced into the circles and told that elephant, do you know what? Uh, you are so powerful, and you can uproot the whole of this tent if you wanted to. Uh, what do you think will happen? That's awareness. That is absolutely awareness. So that awareness of the power within you is what I want to bring out and show you today uh, so that you can understand things. Uh, so that that will free you to go out there and fulfill that great potentials you've got inside of you. So, your mind. So if you've been using visualization and it's not working, it's because you visualizing too many things. <laughs> You're visualizing too many things and you aren't specific enough. Um, that, that is one of the rules. Your mind is like a laser. When your instruction is clear and specific, you must learn to collaborate with your mind. If your mind, if, if your instruction is clear, your mind will follow that instruction very easily. So how do you give your mind instruction that is clear? Most of us, we don't know how to do that. So that's part of what this program is going to be about. So talking about collaborating with your mind. If you want something, um, because your mind will not entertain two things at a time, um, I think the next slide will explain that a bit more. So um, you say I was like, you know, 20 years older here. <laughs> Um, I didn't tell any of my friends. I had an operation. It was really, really very, very serious. Um, but I thank God that I'm over it now. Uh, what I want to share with you about that is when that operation was done, it was, um, it was in my throat. And, uh, after the operation, um, I, it was difficult for me to eat. If you imagine, you know, cutting your throat open and stitching it back, <laughs> and then somebody asks you to put food through it, that the thought of that should scare you. Um, anyway, the worst part of it was I must eat. So I must pass food through that system. Um, so what I did was, um, and they want me that if I didn't eat, if I didn't pass food through it, they're going to put tube through my nose, free food inside me. Uh, that was scary. What was more, more scary is, um, if I don't put food through it, um, it might cause infection and they're gonna send me back to the theater for another operation. So imagine, imagine what I was feeling like. So, what I want that is not to, you know, um, you know, spoil your breakfast. <laughs> um, what I, what I, what I did, which you, you should, 
I told myself every time I put I was about to put food inside my mouth I would say swallowing is good for me swallowing will make better faster swallowing is good for me and I put it in and I was able to eat surprisingly it wasn't as painful as I thought it would be and Somebody didn't say it anymore. Just go to YouTube, go back to the theater, and I'm grateful for that. So, this is not just about making a lot of money. It's not about getting the woman of your dream. It's about every little thing you do in life. Learn to collaborate with your mind. Yeah. So your belief is like a blueprint. Your belief is like so what's a blueprint? It's like the plan of a house. Yeah? The house in the end will be based on the plan and must look exactly as planned. So wherever you are in your journey in life now, um it's down to your blueprint. It is your plan. And that blueprint print you can change it anytime you want okay so you can change your blueprint but how we got we're gonna share that later so the instruction sets of the mind you and ideas at the same time is that empower you example if you want to make money but you're afraid people will be jealous of, um you're telling your mind yeah and it wouldn't buy either of them can you, can you see the point uh, you want to be in a loving relationship but you're afraid of getting hurt yeah so if you have both thoughts at the same time your mind your mind doesn't what to do you got to have one thought at a time and you will be fit but you love all those your chocolate and ice cream you know that's bad for you so you're giving your mind conflicting uh instructions now loves what is familiar if you remember the quote i talked about um you know, somebody drinking old wine doesn't want new one. You know, so so where we are today has been around for thousands of years. So it's not new. Uh, so your mind loves what is familiar. Where you are is familiar. It might be inconvenient. It might be frustrating, but it's familiar. Yeah. So you must make the unfamiliar the goal. Where you're going is unfamiliar familiar you have to make that familiar and this is where uh, visualization will help you and whatever is familiar that you don't like make it unfamiliar there is a process to doing that okay you have the freedom to make your beliefs your beliefs in turn make you I, th I think I'm, I'm going, am I going too fast? <laughs> Please tap yes or no. Am I going too fast or not? And are you guys getting this? Uh, so, so that I know we are on the right track. Um, you know, you promised to participate at the beginning. So please do. Uh, let me know that I'm not moving too fast and that you're getting, uh, the flow of what we're talking about. Uh, beliefs are self-fulfilling prophecy that you can change. Yeah, so you have, you have the capacity to change anything you don't like. Okay. Hmm. So we we act in a way that is consistent with our self image. So I'm just gonna talk about. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Ruth, I was, uh, 
uh, the last two, okay, I will find strike a balance. <laughs> I'll strike a balance. I'm I'm trying to get through um, so that I don't I don't keep you here for too long. Okay. So I'm still on instruction sets of the mind. We act in a way that is consistent with our self-age. Okay. That is how we see ourselves. So if you see yourself as somebody uh, not capable of maintaining a relationship, that's what you're gonna get. You see, who gets fired from work all the time? That's what you're gonna get. And I'm now making use of this coaching practice. People, you know, after a few months, they get that transformation, and then they understand. Uh, thank you, Roslyn. Roslyn says she's getting it. That's fantastic. So, let's talk about self-image a little bit. This guy, this surgeon. Uh, Maxwell Mott, um he wrote a book called Cyber Cyber. Um, uh, Cyber um, he, he was a surgeon, plastic surgeon, and uh, he would conduct operation on you know some people and do magnificent work, and and they will change their life from there on. On some other time, he is going to do this operation salt, and these people will not change a little bit, not even a iota of change in their mind. They will still feel as awful as they felt before the operation. So this guy started digging in. Why is this? He came to the conclusion that is cause of self image so that most people don't even need surgery all that they need is a change of self image so what he started doing was before he actually conducted the operations he would go through counseling with them he would lecture them on their self image and sometimes after that, okay you know what i don't even need the operation anymore. So, this is the reason why you say, you know, people like Michael Jackson, 30, 40, 50, because it's trying to change the outside without changing the inside. And it's not just Michael Jackson, it's so many other people. So, um, so self image is critical. Uh, to, to work. My voice is breaking up. That's nothing absolutely to do with me. I'm speaking, <laughs> I'm speaking as clearly and as loudly. So it could be, um, you know, the networks or something. But, um, please let me know if it, if it has improved, uh, Rose. Um, I, I conducted, um, you know, I conducted, uh, this interview a while ago. I gave the interview to a newspaper. And uh, they they came up with uh, the title uh, "Fixing Businesses Problems Without Fixing uh, the Person Behind the Business Is Fruitless," and that is exactly what we've been talking about. Some people have businesses, you know, which is the reason why I'm actually doing this. It's because I work with a lot of business owners, and I know some people are working like, you know like a dog working 12 hours but they are getting results so my goal is to help them get the result which is where the result is coming from so okay so it's um ah Okay, so it seems like uh, you're not the only one. Okay, Carol said it's okay now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, problems created by your thinking cannot be solved by the same thinking. Um, that I just, you know, is that from Albert Einstein, um, is you cannot solve this problem of belief system and all of that by yourself. Um, because it's that same mind that created it in the first place. So get a coach, get a mentor, get accountability partner 
to help you out. Um, belief transference. Belief transference is um, where you see where they say you are an average of the five people that you are in close proximity with. Um, so this is a new idea for you know for women. Um, why would the women will tell us that you know most of them are doing their menstrual period at the same time? This is to all come together. Uh, so yeah, human beings. I think God planted something within us that you, whether you like it or not, people around you will affect you uh, positively or negatively. Um, so, like, uh, because I'm running out of time, um, you know, Root, Root is actually here, <laughs> which is great. Uh, me, I, I was, um, you know, which Root, and, and um, every day are children. Our children were getting great jobs. Our you know, friends were making progress, all because uh, they were all around us, and our transformation was phenomenal. Um, actually, at my last um, seminar, I think I played this video, but I don't have enough time to play it today because uh, our time is almost running out. So, I want to talk about uh, being in a group. Uh, how being in a group can fast track. Um, you know, I was a small, uh, when I was a very young man, young, very strong man. <laughs> so many times to stop, but I couldn't. I was stop for two years, and then I uh, this friend of mine, uh, we were both smokers, and we were trying to stop. And we just decided one day to be quit together at the same time. And then we bought a packet and said, we'll never smoke again. Okay? Um, I never smoked again, and he never did. So that's the power of cooperation. That's the power of collaboration. Um, there is something within the mind uh, that responds to collaboration and the power of mastermind. I told you about the book Think and Grow Rich. Um, Andrew Carnegie actually uh, inspired Napoleon Hill to write the book and he gave him all the insights uh, to use for writing the book. One of the key uh, uh, insight in the book is the power of mastermind as people coming together, talk on something together, they will get the results like 1,000 times faster, um, which sounds like an exaggeration, but it isn't. So, why am I saying that to you? Um, it is because I want you to get results, because results always tell the truth. So, wherever you are today, um, wherever you get, it's nobody else's fault, um, it is done to you. So, whatever you're doing that you're not doing right, um, then you need to change it. You change it. Set big goals. Because big goals exact small goals. Uh, small goal drags because what on it that will accept mediocrity or poverty. The bigger your goal, the more energy you get to generate. To get blueprint. So, this is what we're going to work on perception, your use of time, your creativity, your effective logic. Let's assume this use of time because you've got the same, you know, Jeff Bezos is running the biggest company in. Amazon. You've got 24 hours. He's got 24 hours. I've got 24 hours. Just dissolve. 
Don't forget to talk about the cause of the couple. Thank you very much for reminding me. Um, actually, after this live, but I'm gonna make it sure it's a long story. It's not who you think you think you are not. It's who you think you are not. Should resonate with you. So before I go for that, I mean, I wasn't the cause after all. It seemed like one, but um, it was actually a blessing in these guys. So I was in my corporate job at the time. See, uh, you know, put it in, put it up. I left, I was reading my. Um, and I forgot about the tea. And by the time I remember it was cold, so I put it in the microwave and drank it, got my car key, got in the car, up, right in the middle, I just found that my heart was pounding. My heart was pounding so loud I've never heard my heart pant ever before. Okay, the audio is bad or no? Okay, is, is, is it bad for everyone or is it just Ibrahim? Uh, please let me know if the audio is bad for everyone. Um, so, so I'm gonna continue the story. So to cut a long story short, I just thought, okay, if I drink a lot of water, uh, that strong tea, um, I drank was the reason. So drink a lot of water and then, uh, it's likely to get better. I drank one liter of water and got about my business. Go back home and, uh, ah, no, okay, this is annoying. What's going on? Okay. Wasn't bad. Okay, hopefully. Let me continue. Hopefully, we'll have the recordings and then I'll share the recording with you guys. But, you know, um, I'll speak as loud as I can. As I was saying, um, so I drank a lot of water and then I went to bed. Um, 1 a.m. I woke up and my heart was pounding. I was sweating profusely. So I called the ambulance and the ambulance took me away, put a lot of gadgets on me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to share the replay. Uh, hopefully it, it records clearly. I, I hope it does. Um, but, you know, I'm just going to continue because we just have a little bit left to spend. So they took me to the hospital and I was admitted anyway, discharged to my GP. So my GP said, okay, you've got high blood pressure. I'm going to put you on it, on a drug, uh, which it did. So, um, so I went away, uh, to, to the, to the pharmacy to collect the drug. So when I got there, the young pharmacist was telling me the side effects of the drug. And, uh, the one that scared me the most was it said, uh, one of the side effects is erectile dysfunction. <laughs> And uh, I panicked, um, so I started looking for other solutions. And uh, so the solution I found um, was to just sit quietly every morning for 20 minutes and just breathe without thinking. Uh, if you think that's easy to do, it's not. <laughs> anyway, so I kept at it because I was motivated to change. I was motivated to get my BP down. So the side effect of that was uh, the BP went down and then I started get intuition, inspiration, and, uh, you know, that was when I started writing my book and all of that. And I got a lot of uh, uh, benefit from that, uh, from that cause of a cup of tea to blessing in disguise. Uh, so from then on, I have been doing that every morning. I just sit quietly and I advise that you do that too, if you can, uh, is get tremendous benefit from it. 
Okay, I hope the voice is better now. Um, so, old versus new model. So, never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change things, build a new model that renders the existing model obsolete. That was by Buckminster Fuller. Okay, Carol, thank you very much for that feedback. Okay, so I will actually speak as loud as I can so that uh, you guys will be able to pick it up even if the, uh, if the network is shaky. And I think I can feel it here too. So, what we've been saying uh, was buttressed by Buckminster Buck, Buck, Buck Fuller. He said, never change things by fighting the existing reality. Now, wherever you are, it's your existing reality. Stop fighting it. So what you need to change is build a new model that renders where you are obsolete, irrelevant. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. Change and learning. Yeah. Would you, would you agree we are in a time of rapid change? Yes, we are. Uh, in times of rapid change, learners inherit the heart while the learned are beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Um, I hope that is absolutely self-explanatory. We've got to learn every time. Uh, learners will inherit the heart. And I totally agree with that, and I believe that too. Now, let's talk about learning and confidence. To learn, we need a certain degree of confidence, not too much and not too little. If we have too little, uh, we think we can't learn. If we have too much, uh, we think we don't have to learn. <laughs> um, so, where am I going with learning? Um, it, it's, I, I'm going to make this brief. Um, Timothy Galway will take, will take uh, somebody from the street who hasn't played tennis in his life and teach him to play tennis in just 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So how did he do that? That's some of the things that we're going to examine in this project. And Michel Thomas would teach uh, the Hollywood language for just 72 hours, and they will come out speaking French fluently just after three days. So these two coaches are phenomenal, and it is about learning how to learn. What these guys have done is they understand the way the mind works and they play with that to get people to shift. Because when you shift uh, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, uh, you will not even recognize yourself. So learning is really very, very powerful. So what these two coaches, what they have in common, they, they live at different times and they are world apart you know, from tennis to language, very far apart. But what they have in common is they change the world view of their clients. Uh, this is what I'm trying to do with you today is to change your world view from, you know, from that perspective uh, where you focus at the moment. Change the mindset ceiling of their client. Mindset ceiling is what subconsciously you think Oh, that's beyond me. I can't do that. But that is absolutely not true. Nothing is beyond you if you, you believe. So the word is believe. So those clients became a different person capable of incredible results. So it's like the parable of old one and new one. You cannot become a new person. You cannot get the new goals by remaining the same. So you've got to shift. You've got to move. So the genius of Nikola Tesla, if you haven't heard about him, this guy predicted mobile we're using today like 100 years ago. He was one of the brightest mind of his time and also highly spiritual. He invented the AC electricity among other great inventions. He said, if you want to know the secret of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibrations. What does what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Um, I'm going to explain it to you. The frequency of your goal is higher than where you are. Otherwise, you would have got it, you know, ever since. 
So you got to get yourself onto the frequency of your goal in order to achieve it and raise your vibration. For you to get onto the frequency, you got to raise your vibration. Decision is powerful. In, in, in that book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, um, it said, uh, most high achievers, they make decisions quickly and they rarely change it. The moment they've made decision, that's done. The power of that is, the moment you're committed to a decision, the universe will support you uh, to make it happen. And you see in the next quote I'm going to share with you, commitment is the secret weapon that elevates your frequency. So, W.H. Murray, this is the quote. This quote, uh, the first time I read it, I captured it and put it on my wall. I would advise you to do the same. The moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. W. H. Murray. Um, that quote very, very powerful. What is he saying in essence is the only thing you need to do is to be committed to whatever goal it is that you're after, be committed to it. The providence, God or Allah, or whatever your equivalent of God is, will come and support you. But you've got to have commitment first. So, how many of you are excited about what we've discussed today? I think we've covered a lot. And, uh, it's also maybe feeling, you may be feeling overwhelmed as well. So, um, what I'm gonna share with you now is really very, very powerful. Learning is like drinking. You cannot drink a bucket of water in two minutes. Uh, but you can certainly drink it in two days. Um, how would you prefer to drink, like the man on the left or like the man on the right? Um, certainly, I would love to drink it slowly. So, all that I've talked to you today about you go away and then you go about your business and you go back to the old ways. I do not want that to happen to you um, because I know a lot of people that have read great books, they've gone to great seminars, they've gone to great webinars, and they stand up and they leave, and that's the end of it. I don't want that to be the end. So, uh, the chances that you're going to implement anything, and actually the implementation, what I've shared with you is just the information. And the implementation itself, it takes skills, and it takes diligence, and it takes working in a group. Yeah? It takes working in a group, and that's the power of mastermind. Um, you know, time, time is irreplaceable. Um, you know, most people in my coaching practice, I just ask them, why are you postponing your future? Um, because they keep procrastinating and pushing things forward. Even when opportunity is staring them in the face, they will still say they will do it tomorrow and they never will. So we really don't have a lot of time. Um, we're running out of time. So, um, it's important that we are able to go as deep as we can, uh, but time is, is our enemy. Marcus Aurelius said, do not ask as if you were going to live 10,000 years. Death hangs over you. While you live, while it is in your power, be good. Be good means reach your full potential. So, um, I, I want to give people, um, an opportunity. Um, so I want to give five people the opportunity to join my rapid change program, RCP. It's a six weeks program. Uh, the goal is to help you shift your beliefs and get your desired goal. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is that you have to qualify to be part of it. Um, so if you want to be part of it, uh, you know what to do. Just send me an email or send me 
all of you certainly have got my number. Send me a text message or send me an email and uh, my team will speak to you about how you can be a part of the program. The power of it is it's going to be in a group. Uh, the power of group is, like I've, I've shown you in the belief uh, transference, is that when somebody is successful, everybody around them will also shift. That's what happens to Ruth. Uh, after a coaching program with me, everybody around her, you know, her children, her friends, everybody started shifting and doing greater things in life. So I want this to be a group program where when one person shifts, all other uh, people will also shift uh, in that order. So that's the reason why I'm doing it. I don't want people going away um, and wasting the opportunity to transform themselves. So you can apply at the end of the webinar. The all that you need to do is just send me a message that you are interested and then my team will, you know, arrange uh, to speak to you and it might be me speaking to you as well. And then we'll put this uh, team together, we we'll call it a rapid change program, and then we'll go make this change and make it together. Yeah? So the commitment, the commitment, we will expect you to make commitment as a member of the group. Um, the power of this project is in the group. Uh, if you have a friend or family that may benefit, then you may submit their names and they will go through the same vetting process. Uh, if you have a spouse or you have a friend you want to bring along to be part of it, that would be great. Um, there will be a tiny little investment that will yield lifetime returns, um, absolutely. And then the commitment to share your result after the program. The reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that uh, this group, they achieve such phenomenal results that, you know, will put them out there and they will become an advocate for this program um, because I want this program to reach a whole lot of people and help people to transform and change their lives. So, um, my, my gift has promised for, uh, psychometry test. Um, if you haven't done it, uh, for some of you here, you've done it. If you haven't done it, as you're sending me, uh, your message, whether you're interested or not, uh, just, uh, you know, send me the message and then I'll forward that link to you. Uh, those who sign up will get my recording of my seminar, How to Build and Run a Highly Profitable Business with One Strategic Move. Carol was at that uh, uh, seminar, uh, which is one that she can testify that it was awesome. So it's my intellectual property. I'm giving it to you. You have lifetime of access to it. Um, it's actually worth £10,000 if I'm going to sell it. Uh, so uh, you have got nothing to lose. I want... Um, you know, a lot of people to get their transformation uh, after this project. So, um, right now I am, um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Carol. Um, I want question, is there any question from you so that I will be able to answer you and then uh, we can all go away and make the change that we need in our life. And uh, that program is going to start um in the next uh, few days, um, because I don't want to uh, procrastinate. That's what I teach. I teach prompt action. So it's up to you to take action. Uh, okay, price range, Carol. Don't worry about price. Um, if you're if you're qualified to be part of it, we'll find a way to get you in. Don't worry at all about the price. We're not doing it for money. We're doing it for transformation. And the most important thing we're looking for is commitment of people. Uh, that are going to be a part of this group and I want them to become an advocate for this program and it's going to be absolutely life-changing and I am 100% committed to that. So if you're interested, just send me the message that you're interested. We'll talk about everything that you you want to know about the program uh, when we uh, do the assessment for people uh, to qualify for the program. So, is there any other question? Please let bring your question in. That's great. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be partly face-to-face. -face, it's going to be partly online. And uh, 
what age group no age group there is nothing like that <laughs> no age group you could be 10 you could, i'm joking you've got to be an adult i'm sure we are all adults here uh, you've got to be adult no other requirement but when we speak to people we know if they're suitable for the uh, project or not because um I, I want people that are ready for change it's, it's not for me i'm not doing the the project for for fun i want people to get results get significant results in their lives um so is there only carol that has got um uh, questions uh please get get your question in and let me answer it about the program about what you had today you know don't be shy um let's let's have you any question from you as can see people are typing away bring it in you know send send your question in so you know what to do is to uh, send me send me most of you are actually oh ibrahim um yes you you have to be in uk to be part of the program unfortunately um the, the okay the address to send it to let me just share it with you you either send it to my um email so seven nine three nine five thousand and fifty three or you send it to admin at mbc consult mbc consults.com i hope that spelling is correct it is um so so send send your message either to my phone or to my email and um ibrahim can you share with me where 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 are you calling from um if where, where are you calling from ibrahim uh, okay your your mind loves what is familiar can you explain a bit more of that, that that's absolutely fantastic your your mind love what is familiar because um the, the the thing with with us humans is we love what we know and understand uh, you see some people they will be using one car for a long time it's because they're familiar with it uh, we are familiar we are comfortable around people that we know um, we if you go to a restaurant this is something I've been observing a lot a lot and people are also uh, corroborating it if you go to a restaurant the first place you sit uh, the first time you go to that restaurant is likely going to be the place you sit all the time if that's not you, then you're unique. <laughs> okay, um, Ibrahim, you're, you're in UK. Uh, okay, you'll be traveling soon. Um, the way this program will work is when you speak to my team or speak to me, uh, we're gonna work out uh, if it's gonna be suitable for you, if you're, if you're gonna be traveling, um, because part of it is online and part of it is actually being present coming together uh, so and there aren't I don't want a large crowd I want people I can actually help directly uh, so that I'll monitor their progress and uh, get them resolved that's that's the whole idea of it Ibrahim thank you for that so I was explaining about the mind loving what is familiar is when you when you go to a restaurant you're likely to sit in the same place if you go on a bus if you are the type that if you go upstairs all the time you're gonna go upstairs all the time and you're gonna sit around the same place all the time you're gonna take the same route to walk all the time so it's absolutely evident in the way we live that we love familiarity so when you take us out of our comfort zone you know into an unknown that is where fear comes in that's why people don't get resolved because for you to get new results you need to do something new how do you make the unfamiliar familiar so carol that's that's a that's a very very brilliant question um because how do you make the unfamiliar familiar let's say uh your goal for the next two years is to make one million pounds so how do you make that familiar if you have never made hundred thousand so that would just freak out your mind, um, which, which is the reason why I made the analogy about the new wine and old bottle. So that is the reason why you, that you are now, you are going to become somebody different in order to, you need a new identity 
for you to be able to be the person that will get your goal. So making the unfamiliar familiar is a process. Uh, this is part of the process that we're going to go through in the group. Uh, but a, a small explanation is whatever that your goal is, uh, part of the making it familiar is to write it down. I'm sure you've heard that before. But it just goes beyond writing it down. Otherwise, we all write down our goals and, you know, there, there will be chaos everywhere. <laughs> so after writing it down, there is a lot of things that we need to do to make it familiar. And that is part of the process we're going to go through in our group. Um, and visualization is also one of the ways to make the unfamiliar familiar. Um, so, but most people do familiar, familiarization, they do it wrongly because they're not aware that there is a difference between objective visualization and subjective visualization. If you do it wrong, you're not going to get results. It just leads to frustration. So, uh, so those are the nuances that I want us to go through and make the change that we want. So any more question um, from, from the group? And I think, um, you know, send me, send me your message uh, through my phone or through my email. Um, I need only five people. So uh, it's going to be based on first come, first serve. And then uh, maybe in another three months, I'll take another three people, uh, I'll take another five people and have them go through their transformational journey. And then I will keep doing this until we build a movement to build. And that's my goal. Um, so uh, it appears uh, all our questions are answered. And um, those of you that are interested will will be we will work on belief change the, that really works i am nlp trained not sure whether it's changed me sufficiently and that's what i'm talking about um nlp itself uh is a journey that i've been on too uh the the, the challenge with nlp is there are too many ways you can do things uh, which is part of the challenge your mind just wants one thing, one way, and you're consistent with that. Uh, so even if you are NLP trained, uh, if you're trying to find solution uh, to a problem with uh, so many, you know, you're trying so many options, uh, it's likely it's going to be difficult. And one thing you also need to understand, Carol, is uh, you cannot see your own blind spot. You cannot see your own blind spot. Um, because, uh, you know, the, the quote I, I got from uh, Albert Einstein that, uh, you cannot solve a problem with the mind that created it, even if you are NLP trained. Um, it's like asking a doctor to come and do operation on his own throat. <laughs> that's gonna, that's not gonna be possible. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, because I, I don't know what belief change you're trying to change, uh, you're, you're trying to address. Uh, but, you know, that's some of the things that we're going to work on. And, you know, the solution is absolutely unique to individual. Okay. All right. Um, so if there isn't any more questions coming, um, I'm going to close now. And thank you very much. Um, uh, please send your message to my phone or to the email address, and then we'll take it from there. I hope you join our next uh, webinar. When we put it out, we'll be in touch and let you know. Uh, have a wonderful day, and thank you for joining uh, this webinar. And bye for now. God bless.